Pero no te estás bien, ¿eh? everyone, my name is Danny Horbiak and welcome to Around the Rotunda, the first and only MCTV show written, produced and performed entirely by ladies. But hey, shout out to the men of our crew, you guys are pretty cool too. Anyways, let's dive right in and meet our panel for the night. First up is newcomer Erica Kozak. Big round of applause Woo! for Erica. Yay! She's really nice, she's really nice. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Thanks. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. Oh, of course. <laughs> All right, moving on. Let's see. Uh, next to her is fan favorite Michelle DiMartino. Great to have you back, Michelle. Thanks. Are you happy to be here? Yes. Yeah, we're loving your dress. We're calling it boho chic. Thanks. Yeah, you agree with that? <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> and last but certainly not least, next to her we have the beautiful and brilliant Clancy Burke. Couldn't be around the rotunda without you, Clancy. Oh, you shouldn't have. Thank you. <laughs> Are you blushing? Just a little. <laughs> But uh, ladies, I'm curious, what do you think we have in store for, for season two? Laughter. Lots laughter. of laughter. Laughter. All right, I like it. I agree I think with that. A lot of good times. Good, good times. Friends. All right. Do you like a little bit of mystery, though? You know, keeps it spicy. Ooh, I like it. How I about see, you? I see somebody showing up in a clown suit and pieing us in the face. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oddly specific. Falling from the sky. <laughs> somebody peeing themselves. Michelle going missing. Yeah. Yeah. That would happen. <laughs> Right. Sorry, let me dream. Loving, loving, the, <laughs> loving the predictions, but I think that's enough daydreaming for one show. Let's move on to Table Talk, where we discuss the top news stories of the week. First up, the debate. There's been a lot of talk about Trump's 51 interruptions mm. and whether or not it was rigged in Clinton's favor. Where do you, where do you guys think we should begin first? Wow, the interruptions, excessive. Like, I saw this article that said, like, he did it 52 times. Wow. It's crazy. So I know a lot of people have been comparing this to a big study that have uh, been going around, just that they say guys interrupt women frequently. Mm -hmm. Do you guys think that's what it is, or is it just because Trump's an idiot? Trump's just, an idiot. I just think that's who he is. <laughs> yeah. Wrong. But, wrong. But, wrong. <laughs> but, 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 we have to talk about Clinton. She just looks like a robot the entire time, smiling and like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Is that a surprise either, though? No. Absolutely not. That's true. Like, he's unhinged. She's a robot. You know, I don't care if you're black, white, orange in Trump's case. Like, <laughs> I don't care about that. I just want someone who can lead, like, our country. I don't think either of them can do that. No. no I'm, I'm all in for Clinton right now because as soon as I hear something out of Trump's mouth, I'm like, I'm going to Mexico or Canada. <laughs> Hopefully they'll take us because I know our country wouldn't take anybody else in. No, yeah. Hashtag thanks, Trump. <laughs> I think the funniest line, though, was the end when Donald Trump was like, I think I can make America great again, blah, blah, blah. But if she wins, I will absolutely support her. So I was like, okay, that, that makes, makes sense. no sense. Well, I mean, but he has to say that because you have to support the president no matter what. What, oh. what surprised me is when all of a sudden he's, he brought up Rosie O'Donnell. Oh, <laughs> yeah. He should have done anything in his power to keep that, like, suppressed. It yep. should have been Clinton bringing that up. So he, I, he just completely malfunctioned. Mm -hmm. Entertaining to watch, yes, concerning yeah. that he might be our next president. It's Absolutely. Like, oh gosh. Robot and broken robot. Who do you want? <laughs> <laughs> I'll go for the robot. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> What's up next, Ben? Uh, okay, so also in news this week, a Quinnipiac University student is facing expulsion after a Snapchat with racist undertones went viral. The picture in question features another student wearing a black beauty mask with the caption, Black Lives Matter. The student who appears in the picture has not been punished and was instead dubbed an oblivious victim, while the photographer is no longer at Quinnipiac. Hmm. Wow. I think she should have gotten in trouble. That's obviously offensive to, the, yeah. It's Honestly, I have to disagree. I, I definitely think it wasn't right, but it's something I could see myself doing in not a malicious way, just simply just, you know, just being funny with my friends. And obviously it's not funny in any way, but it just, it's crazy that something that small could blow up so big. Mm -hmm. And I know one big thing is they were saying that the girl that was in the mask wasn't involved at all, but so the way that she's looking at the camera and the, the way that she's smiling, I feel like they were joking together. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. They, have, they could use any other Did you cast. see exactly. Erica? Yeah, and I feel like, you know, anytime you post a Snapchat picture or something, you always show the person you take the picture of, like, oh, this is so funny or whatever. So I feel like in the same way, I don't feel like it was meant to be this awful thing that she was trying to insult anybody with. So I think it got taken a little out of hand, but I can see why people would be offended by it. Yeah, I mean, I send stupid Snapchats out too. I'm sure we all do. Oh, yeah. please. Like, I mean, 
especially like does the dog filter like am I offending all dogs out there? Oh my god! Like you can't take things too literally. And I, I, at the same time, I do know it's a sensitive topic, but mm -hmm. it just it seemed like the type of thing like wow, it, I would do. And I was yeah. surprised that the university itself decided that they were responsible for disciplining yeah. this person. It didn't say Quinnipiac in the picture at all, but um, I guess it's something they're taking really seriously. So many crazy things in this world. Also <laughs> yesterday, a teenager entered an elementary school armed with a handgun. The teenage shooter shot two male students and a female teacher at Townville Elementary School. The suspect has not been identified by police, and this event adds yet another elementary school shooting to the long list of similar crimes in this nation. I mean, sometimes you just like ask yourself, like, when's it gonna end? Like every day, it seems to be like a new tragedy, and you're like calling. I call my dad. I'm like, hey, dad, did you see what's on the news? It's like another one, and it's just, it's really so sad. So this is something I'm gonna relate. You guys heard in Canada, they're having rules set on um, certain dogs, dog breeds that you can't own anymore because they're deemed dangerous. No, I didn't no. know. Well, it's true. Oh. So I think it's crazy that Canada is taking these measures and you know banning dogs because they're potentially dangerous if the owner raises them poorly. And here it's like, yeah, we're running around with guns, it is fun. That is so true, we can't even ban guns. <laughs> the, NR the NRA honestly is, they, they literally rule the world. How, how, yeah. how did it get to this? Like I'm trying to figure out what's it gonna take until something Until somebody happens. does something. I feel like it's gotten so out of hand in the past couple of years that it's just unreal and I don't know why we can't get a hold of it. I know, I don't wanna hear these stories anymore. Like, yeah. I, I know, I'm done hearing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done hearing these stories. All right. Anything more fun? Anything more uplifting? For we're going to work. Actually, I don't know if this is uplifting, but we're going to jump into campus news right now. All right. Let's hear student it. Student government is making efforts to alter the student code of conduct to allow organized tailgating events for students who are 21 and up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's unfair for Mara Security and Poughkeepsie Police to shut down campus tailgates when the students involved are of legal in drinking age. Hell yeah, that's all yeah. I can even say. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so hold on though. I have a question about this. Okay. Um, when people are in their dorms, it's like, okay, that's one thing. When people go out to bars and they show their IDs, that's another thing. But are, are the security guards gonna go around and check everybody's ID at these things? You know? I don't know. It's not anything where there's a bouncer or any. it's just you walking in. So, I know. It's just I, not fair that like, when we're 21, I went to a tailgate, you know, beginning of the year, most fun I've ever had. It was so much fun. Please, I'm yeah. 21. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let loose after some capping. I would high five you, but I'm really far away. <laughs> high five. Thanks. Those are cool too. You know, actually, you know, pass the high five along. Am I right? I'm <laughs> sorry. Are you, are you guys 21? I don't think no. so. No. Oh. <laughs> no. Oh. It's all, we got a good balance. We got a good balance. What do you guys think about this? Um. I don't see why not. I mean, I guess, you, like you said, they don't have a bouncer specifically, but they could section off an area and have, you can't enter the area unless you're 21, if that's the way they that's could true. section off it. I mean, I don't know that that would work, but and, and I really think... And they Riverfest, too, so, you know, that's something that they check everybody's IDs. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think it's just possible. the drinking age to 18, I <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I, I don't really care anymore. I'm 21, so... Lazy <laughs> for president! Yes. I will be in March, so... <laughs> It'll oh. affect it'll affect me in March. Oh, okay, so you're almost there. No, I'm not. Like a year and a half away. Michelle's the baby. I'm gonna like. Oh, it's gonna suck. But it's okay. It's okay. Hang in there. All right, Erica, what do you have for us now? So, new school year means new student body president. Clancy here sat with one of the campus celebrities in a new segment we call 50 Questions. We wanted to know the juicy secrets about his personal life and his daily routine serving as student body president. Check it out. Hey, Clancy, come on in. Hey, Brandon, can I ask you some questions today? Yeah, sure thing. Come take a seat. What is the first thing you do when you wake up? Go back to sleep. What's the daily routine look like? Meetings. How often does that change? It doesn't. <laughs> okay, so what's better, Upper West or Fulton? Upper West. What is going to be your bar of choice for your senior year? Mahoney's. In one word, can you describe the bromance between you and your EVP, Nick? Misunderstood. <laughs> what's your favorite color? Green. What's the last movie you saw? The Social Network. How'd you feel about it? Inspired. Tell me which one you like better, Mac or PC? Mac. What about iPhone or Android? iPhone. What's your favorite spot to eat in Poughkeepsie? Shotzi's. How do you describe a typical day in the SGA office? Distracting. What made you want to become the president of SGA? When I lost in fifth grade. What's a negative part about being our president? The emails. What are the perks? Free meal in the cafeteria. When is your free time? 
I don't have that. <laughs> what shows are you currently watching? What's your favorite? The Stranger Things. Okay, now tell me, do you need to sleep with your socks on or off? Definitely off. If you could eat one food for the rest of your life, what would it be? Big Mac and cheese. What is going to be your ultimate goal for this year? To get as much things done as possible. What is the most annoying thing ever for you? When people move things on my desk. <laughs> Let me show you guys my desk. Can you give me your thoughts on the pumpkin spice latte? It's very cliche. Do you think people who drink the pumpkin spice latte are basic? Yeah, I'd say so. Do you like to cook? I love to cook. All right, now tell me, what's going on here over at your desk? Um, this is where I usually get distracted the most. What is your go-to quick dinner meal that you have to make yourself? Spaghetti and meat sauce. What is the fanciest dinner that you alone can prepare? Lasagna. Do you and your housemates ever have cooking parties? Sometimes. Do you and your housemates ever argue? <laughs> All the time. If you ran the world, what is one rule you would enact? I would eliminate the ability of becoming gluten-free. Do you ever not have a smile on your face? When I don't get dessert. When you were little, what was your dream job? To be a masseuse. What would you teach if you could become a teacher? Probably English. How do you define selfies? When the person who's taking the photo takes the photo of himself. Are you a hater of selfies? I'm a culprit. Do you think selfies are only for attention seekers? Not at all. Do you have any hidden talents? I would say running or being a professional selfie taker. What is your most valuable skill? Definitely running. What's something you're terrible at? Getting retweets on Twitter. Okay, we're almost done here. Okay, I'll show you guys the way out. How do you feel about this being your last year here? Oh, I'm so sad. Do you feel like you're going to be able to stay away? Not at all. Do you think you'll become the president of Marist College one day? If the opportunity presents itself. What's one thing you want to leave behind? Uh, strong leadership. What are you going to do after this interview? Probably go eat food. How would you rate this interview? 10 out of 10. Will you invite us back? Probably not. I'm kidding. You guys are always welcome back. Thanks so much, Brandon. No worries, Clancy. Take care. I thought he was serious when he said he wouldn't have us back. <laughs> oh my god. No, I don't know about you guys, I don't really know him all that well, but yeah, just either. just from that quick interview, like I feel like I learned a lot about him, but mm -hmm. more importantly, I get the sense that he's number one a really confident person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because he was able to just like on the spot come up with those questions. And he was also really approachable too. Mm -hmm. yes. Like so personable. Yeah. I was he felt like a normal human being. I, like I wasn't talking to the president, like you know, <laughs> pretty intimidating. Uh, you know, just a small little girl like me, he was a nobody. Oh no. So, uh, no. No, but seriously, the, wow, it, it was it was good times. Mm -hmm. What do you guys think? Well, like when he said uh, like the question Upper West or Fulton, he said Upper West. I'm like that's where I live, but like I'm very <laughs> curious about why he said that because I love Upper West, but I I'm excited to live in Fulton next year. So he's I'll, a man of the people. Yeah. <laughs> but Fulton's where it's at. <laughs> oh man, I just wanna. Oh, oh you, no, 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 no. I don't want to do anything. I want to hear, I want to hear America. She's the newcomer. I want to give her a chance to shine. No, I really liked him. I thought he was really friendly, and he was somebody you feel like you, if you had a concern or something, I feel like you could just go to him, yeah. and he would be totally like open to hearing it, and he just seemed like I related to dessert because that makes me insanely happy as well. Yeah. So His favorite dessert, favorite dessert is chocolate cake. Mm. Ooh, that's a classic. <laughs> Don't get me hungry again. I, I, I started the show talking about a sandwich, and I, I can't talk about brownies or cake right now. I'm starving already. <laughs> well, I just want to say thanks again, Brandon, for coming on our show. The Marist Student Government Association is always looking to recruit enthusiastic new faces, such as these people right here. And Brandon wanted me to remind everyone of how hard his team works to give us a great campus environment. So reach out to him if you're interested. But aside from our campus celebrities, let's go to Michelle to hear about what <laughs> some of the biggest names in Hollywood are up to. Michelle? Thanks, Clancy. Mm -hmm. It's time for my favorite part of the show. This is the Michelle Minute, <laughs> which is the name that was created by Danny. Hi. <laughs> it's my one minute to take over the show and give you all the latest celebrity gossip I can squeeze in. And it won't be, it'll probably be over a minute. Don't Sorry. tell them, Michelle. <laughs> Michelle Minute. It's alliteration. I'm sorry. It just works. I know. I know. <laughs> okay, so first up, um, I'm going to kind of start on a serious note uh, with the news related to Black Lives Matter. Uh, Serena Williams spoke out about how she fears for her nephew when he was driving her to a meeting one day and she saw a cop car on the side of the road and then suddenly all these thoughts came into her head about the recent events that have happened that we're all aware of. And she cites Martin Luther King Jr. in her official statement after this occurrence that she will not be silent. And I fully support her. News broke this week that Gigi Hadid, 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 Hadid thank we you, was grabbed this. and picked up by 
from behind by an enthusiastic paparazzi. According to Vogue magazine, his name is Vitaly Stadouk. It took a while to pronounce that name. And he also targeted Kim Kardashian West. Take a look. Kim, Kim. Good evening, Kim. Kim. Welcome to Paris again. Hey! Hey! hey. 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 Vogue also writes that he has had similar inappropriate encounters in the past, ranging from trying to kiss Will Smith, crawling <laughs> under. Yeah, okay. Oh my God. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that was I was. A big one. Yeah. I'm sorry. I know it's awful for anybody to receive sexual harassment, but the fact that it was Will. <laughs> Where did Will Smith come from? He's going after all these bombshell girls, and then Will Smith. I'm sorry, Will Smith. I hope you're okay. I'm sorry <laughs> you had to experience that. <laughs> sorry, Michelle. And then there's also crawling under America Ferreira's dress. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> And trying to grab Brad, Brad Pitt, who was blocked by a barricade. So he jumped over it, and he got arrested for that. Don't blame him for that. So, yeah. 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 Actually, mm -hmm. it's all not good. Disgusting. <laughs> and finally, Miley Cyrus has been in the news lately. Like, if you literally search her on Google, she was, like, she had three big news articles about her. First was that she spoke out about being the least paid in Hannah Montana's early days because she didn't know how the business worked yet. Aww. She also, yeah, I know, right? That's like, that doesn't awesome. make sense, right? She's a star. <laughs> yeah, but look at her mansion now. Do we really feel that bad? Yeah, yeah she's okay. okay. She's, she's good. Sorry, I think it fared her pretty well. And then she agreed with Adina Menzel because she took over hosting duties for Ellen Day when uh, Adina Menzel was like, well, I'm a servant of Disney. And Miley was like, yes, me too, I was. And I thought that was really funny. Oh. And she also said that she does not like Mariah Carey at all because she's full of herself, so that prompted everyone to be like, oh, but like, aren't you full of yourself? And then, ooh! <laughs> <laughs> so, do you love Honest Miley? Because I honestly do. Like, honestly. You're, you're about the Miley? Yeah. The Miley? I'm a Miley fan. Yeah? I think she's honest. I mean, you can say what you want. I think she's weird, but I think that she's honest. You're never going to get something where she's going to say something fake or, That's true. you yeah. know, do something in publicity to that'll make her image look good, she's gonna do what she wants. So then my question is, is she doing this because she's a real person, or is this her way to spin the typical Hollywood, uh, I don't know, reporter craze in her favor? Well, I did an article on her, like not on her, but like I saw this recent magazine this article. This is why it's the Michelle Minute <laughs> and not the Danny Minute, just saying. She said she hasn't been on a red carpet in over a year. So she's like very like not like publicity. Like this magazine, Ellie Magazine, was lucky enough to like, or Elle Magazine was lucky enough to get an interview with her because she just doesn't like publicity. She was like, I'm done, and she hasn't been on a red carpet in a year. So, wow. but she did do the interview. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Clancy I'm just, with the receipts here. I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> but yeah, I'm Michelle, and this has been the Michelle Minute. Yay! That was a great minute. Let me just say that <laughs> it was a really, great minute. <laughs> Really jam-packed minute. I like it. I laughed. I cried. I, I insulted Will Smith. I did it all. It was perfect. We got a lot done in that minute. That 60 seconds. Very productive. Uh, well, thank you to everyone who tuned in this week to our first premiere episode. Woo! And if you like what you see, which I know you do, then be sure to like our Maris College Television Facebook page. That's a mouthful. Yeah. Or email marismctv at gmail.com to reach out to us. Let us know what we can do better because you know we're always we're always looking to improve. I didn't say anything about nipples this show, so that's oh, a good thing. Oh no! Too oh, late. Oh. Sorry. So close. And from everyone here at MCTV from around the rotunda, have a good night. Yay! Yay. That, that was really weird what I just said. <laughs>